Welcome to all. In this video, we will see anther culture and pollen culture. Anther and pollen cultures are widely used for haploid production. Let's see the role of haploids in crop improvement. Haploid plants containing one basic set of chromosomes, that is n number instead of 2n number, and dihaploids or doubled haploids are produced by doubling the chromosome numbers of haploids. The doubling can be uh, produced by two methods, either it spontaneously occur or by chemical induction such as treating with chemical like colchicine etc. These haploids and doubled haploids have several advantages in crop improvement. Let's see four key points. The presence of one set of chromosomes enables the selection of mutants for specific traits. Development of haploids from hybrid plants shorten the breeding cycle in the development of novel inbreds and haploid production is an ideal way to eliminate the lethal genes. Presently, several seed companies in western countries use this technique to develop doubled haploids and use them as a inputs for the hybrid seed development. Occurrence of haploids in nature Extremely low frequency rate, the haploid plants occurs in nature through the process of parthenogenesis, that means embryo development from unfertilized eggs. Another way is ovule androgenesis that means embryo development inside the ovule by the activity of a male new cells alone. These things happen in plants like anthrenum and nicotiana etc. Artificial production of haploids was attempted through distant hybridization, delayed pollination, application of irradiation pollens and hormone treatments and temperature shocks. But these produce haploids at very low frequency and they are not reliable. Hence, atoms are made up going through in vitro methods such as anther culture, pollen culture, ovary culture and this the frequency rate is slightly higher and it is a reliable technology. Now we will go to see about anther culture. In vitro culture of flower buds of the appropriate developmental stage. That means it contain immature anthers. To produce the haploid plant is called anther culture. Here care should be taken to avoid injury to anthers since it may induce callous form formation from the anther walls. Anther culture of Datura inaxia was first reported by the scientist Guhan Maheswari in the 1964 and the process of development of haploids under in vitro condition from the anther is referred as androgenesis. This is exploited in plant species such as several cereal crops, vegetables and oil seeds and also tree species. Now briefly see the techniques followed in anther culture. So first the immature flower buds may be taken from the plants grown in the field or in the greenhouse. And in the flower buds the microspore stage that means haploid stage of the pollen grains are confirmed by visualizing under a microscope after staining the pollen grains with methylene blue. In many cases the anthers are cold pre-treated that means after collecting the samples kept in 4 to 10 degrees Celsius cold box for 7 to 14 days and this kind of period is called inductive period this may enhance the androgenesis process in the anthers. The anthers occur certain cytological changes during this kind of inductive period. After the inductive period, the explants are surface sterilized and anthers are inoculated horizontally in the culture medium. In many cases, anthers are cultured devoid of light for 3 weeks that may enhance the induction of callus or somatic embryogenesis process in several kind of explants. The regeneration of haploids through direct and indirect organogenesis or somatic embryogenesis is regularly occurred. Let's see the steps involved in anther culture in the pictorial description. So we will collect immature flower buds and the anthers are surface sterilized or we will sterilize the entire flower buds and carefully excise the anthers and we will inoculate in the culture medium. After that, according to nature of explant or nature of genotype, it may undergo any one of these two process. In one process, the anthers will produce the callus and from the callus, the organogenesis process will take place here. Since the n number of chromosomes are present, haploid plants will develop. In the second case, the anthers will produce embryoid like structure. From there, the haploid plants will be produced. 
Next, we will see pollen culture. Pollen culture also popularly known as microspore culture. The definition for microspore culture is in vitro culture of isolated pollen grains at microspore stage from the early stages of lower bud is called pollen culture. The separation of pollen grains from the flower buds is performed by three methods. First one is mechanical method. The pollen grains are removed manually by gently macerating or squeezing out or crushing the buds of the anthers under ASFT conditions and pollen grains are separated. Second one is float culture method. In this method, the cold treated anthers cultured in the liquid medium up to one week of period. During this period, the microspores are released into the liquid medium and then we will collect the liquid medium by centrifugation or using the sieves. And third method is slit method. Here we collect the anthers, cut at one end and release the microspores into medium or into the nutrient medium directly. So any one of these three methods are used for the separation of microspores and after separation the debris are removed by gradient centrifugation or filtration methods. In some cases, some points, pollen culture are more advantageous for the anther culture. Let us see three key advantages. The anther culture has the disadvantage of regeneration occurs from deployed injured anther walls. Since microspore culture divide of anther walls, it will not this problem will not occur in pollen culture. The pollen culture is more efficient and also more convenient than anther culture. And third point is the tedious process of dissection of anthers is avoided in the pollen culture. Simply we collect the immature flower buds, macerate and by centrifugation or filtration we can easily collect the pollen grains. Now we will see the pollen grain separations by gradient centrifugation. The scientist Wenzel and his team introduced this method to isolate microspores from the ripe, ripe plant. So for this purpose, the flower buds are macerated and released pollens from the suspension culture are layered over a 30% sucrose solution and centrifuged at 1200 G force for 5 minutes. At the end, the less density pollen grains are stayed at the top layer and the heavy dense debris are moved to the bottom and we can easily separate the pure pollen grains. So here is a mixture after centrifugation the pollen grains are stayed up and the debris are stayed down. So before going to next part the uh, development of androgenesis from the microspores briefly we will see about the pollen grain development in plants. Generally in the plants after flowering we can see both stamens and stigma. So from the stamens, anthers are present. In the anthers, pollen sac is present, that is deployed in stratus. From there, it is further matured into microspore mother cells, that is also deployed. Then at this stage, it will undergo one meiosis. Once it undergoes meiosis, it becomes n, carrying n number of chromosomes, and immediately it will go one mitosis. Still, it is maintaining n number of chromosomes. This stage is called uninucleate stage or microspore stage. So this is the suitable stage for culturing androgenesis process to develop the haploid plants. So we have to make sure we can collect immature anthers that are filled with this kind of uninucleate stage microspores or we can separate the microspores and we will use it for anther culture. So generally four pathways explaining the in vitro haploid regeneration from the uninucleate pollen grains. We will see these four pathways. They are generally called as path pathway 1, 2, 3 and 4. In pathway 1, the uninucleate pollen grain may divide symmetrically to yield two equal daughter cells, both of which undergo further divisions. This is observed in Datura Inotura species. And second is pathway 2. Here uninucleate pollen divides unequally. The generative cells are known as sperm cells, degenerates immediately. Then the callus or embryo originates from the vegetative cells. 
this will go on androgenesis process this is observed in nicotiana tobacco datura metal and triticale and another explanation is pathway 3 here pollen embryo originate from the generative cells the pollen embryo is originating from the generative cell the vegetative cell either does not divide or to a limited extent it may divide and it will stop and it form the suspensor like structure the example is hyoscremos species and another pathway is pathway 4 here uninucleate pollen grains divide into generative and vegetative cells both these cells are divided to develop embryo or callus this is observed in tetura inoxia so here you have to remember pathway and brief explanation and the example mostly examples are useful for your examination purpose next another term is called pollen pollen dimorphism in some crops most of the pollen grains are bigger and some of the pollen grains are smaller this kind of two different structures of pollen is called pollen dimorphism the larger grains are generally stained deeply with acetocarmine and smaller pollen grains are stained weakly with acetocarmine this kind of smaller po smaller pollen grain size are called s grains this kind of dimorphism observed in tobacco wheat and barley okay so mostly these s grains responded well for the androgenesis process and useful for anther culture than the large size one now we will see some of the key factors affecting androgenesis process according to the nature of plants environment nutrient medium growth regular everything will affect the androgenesis process we will see those things one by one first one is genotypes generally hybrids perform well than inbreds and second one is status of flowering so we will collect the first flowering flush in the at the immature stage they are responding well for anther culture than late flowering one and environmental condition plant exposed to stress such as temperature water stress may respond better than grown healthy in the field conditions and the stages of pollen grains generally the explant should contain uninucleate microspores that should be immediately after the first mitosis stage is better responsive for the androgenesis and the anther wall factors in some cases example nicotiana the presence of anther improves the possibility of androgenesis process and explant pretreatment so pretreatment of explants by exposing to cold for certain days or time or centrifugation gamma irradiation or treating with auxins may enhance the androgenesis process and next one is culture medium some of the specific culture mediums are reported to perform well for anther culture example example is n6 up medium and niche medium next one is growth hormone the hormones play major role in androgenesis the good most commonly 2,4-D is added in the medium and cultured may improve the performance of androgenesis process and next one is plating density high density plating may enhance the competition and increase the androgenesis process and light most of the cases absence absence of the light in the culture room for the initial two to three weeks may enhance the performance and gaseous surroundings generally the tissue culture room filled with co2 will enhance the androgenesis process has been reported so these are all the key factors we have to consider while developing anther culture process now we will see some of the key applications of anther culture or pollen culture so first one is we may highly helpful for the production of doubled haploids which plays major role in plant breeding techniques and second one is the doubled haploids considerably shorten the breeding cycle and the haploid itself helpful for detection of recessive mutants and haploids helps to eliminate the lethal genes since haploids carrying lethal genes will not growth uh, having growth and development and we can easily identify gametoclonal variation the variations occurs during in vitro androgenesis is called gametoclonal variations that may helpful to identify novel varieties with unique characteristics and detection of recessive haploid mutants and rapid obtainment of mutated gene is achieved through haploid followed by double haploid mechanism 
and production of super medis achieved through androgenesis in asper asparagus officinalis species now we will see some of the key limitations of anther culture so in general the response of the explant is very less up to 10% anthers only responded to the androgenesis process and out of this several abnormalities in embryogenesis mediated regeneration was observed and pr production of albino plants is common and some of the haploid plantlets are having high genetic instability that was observed in many species thank you